It is a story about human behavior and the incentives that motivate you or don't motivate you. Friday, a documentary based on the bestseller Freakonomics opens in theaters. Now, the book, you're familiar with it, it is by journalist Stephen Dubner and economist Stephen Levitt. Released back in 05, has sold more than 4 million copies worldwide. And for the big screen now, a producer has enlisted several documentary filmmakers to explore the hidden side of cheating, corruption, cause and effect, and incentives. Here's a clip from the film. The idea was for the University of Chicago to see if students could increase their test scores simply by giving them a financial uh, incentive. This is awesome! Oh, yes. Yes. You are getting straight A's for me. Yes. So that was a clip from one of the shorts, Can a Ninth Grader Be Bribed to Succeed? That was directed by Heidi Ewing and Rachel Grady, who I should point out were nominated for an Oscar for their 2006 documentary, Jesus Camp. Heidi Ewing, the co-director, and the producer, Chad Troutwine. Join us now to talk about their economic experience and this fascinating documentary. Thanks for popping by. Thanks for having us. Okay, so, but someone might say, how do you turn that book into a movie? I think either one of us could answer that the same way. It's a challenge. Um, but just like how uh, Levitt and Dubner were able to take material and turn it into a, a pop culture phenomenon, I think we had the same material to work with for our film. So rather than uh, deep dive into the statistics, we told stories. We, we let the human incentives come through in those stories. And there are four separate stories told by different directing teams. So how did you attack your project or your passion, which was to portray what's going well and what needs to have uh, some changes in the Chicago school system? Well, it was a really organic process. We read the book and some parts of the book about parenting and about kids and how incentivizing kids really stood out to Rachel and I. So we contacted Stephen Levitt and he was about to start this experiment in Chicago Heights. And of course, similar experiments were, were being run in Washington, D.C., in Chicago, in New York, in Dallas at the same time, using incentives to try to get kids to improve their, their test scores or their behavior, etc. So it was extremely topical. And you know, basically, this was an experiment that, that only focused on ninth graders, and it, they, the, I think the economists were very surprised with the kind of obstacles that they found. It's not that easy to, to just pay kids to do well. Well, and it was $50. That was the initial incentive, but it would build, and then there were other things built in, like a ride in a really cool car. There was, you know, other incentives like they, they had a chance to win $500, or they would, would get $50 a month. They could, um, you know, pizza parties, um, limousine rides, and, and they really, really tried to to make it cool to get good grades and they try to use social incentives and get you know their peers excited about it and it had it had sort of mixed effects but you have to see the movie to see exactly how it turned out. Well that's the thing it worked for some and then didn't work for others so what have you both learned about human behavior about yourselves even about what it's like if somebody dangles something in front of you that you really would like? Well I think Levitt and Dubner make that point articulately when they say it's not so much about determining incentive schemes that work in fact they'll almost always get defeated it's more about asking the right questions and it's not a wasted effort. Occasionally we'll stumble on things that really do work. We've found, we've identified the incentives. Then can we come up with ways to make sure that we use them correctly? Okay, we are looking at a clip right now from Freakonomics of a different storyline, different than the story that, port, that comes out in the Chicago school system, about sumo wrestling. And, and there's a connection between sumo wrestling and the world of high finance. Can you explain that connection and what you learned about corruption? Sure. It's this notion that there are uh, people in, in different levels that we elevate through uh, their credibility. And uh, in Japanese culture, it's the sumo culture. It's nearly a, a millennium old, and it's very tied to Japanese culture and the Shinto religion. Uh, Alex Gibney uh, very astutely identified that in many ways we had held people like Alan Greenspan to a similar high level, and perhaps we shouldn't have. Uh, I think that there was a, an arrogance in some, at some uh, in, in the Japanese culture, and maybe in the financial services community. We identify those things uh, too, at our, uh, too late at our peril. Okay, so how to undo that then? Well, I think what it is is instead of being swept away um, by any organization or any individual and with this assumption that, uh, that uh, they're simply going to act in a, in, a, in a way unlike other humans, they won't be as incentivized to cheat, uh, is, a, is, a failed, is a failed notion. 
if people are given an opportunity to benefit from cheating, a certain percentage of them always will. Okay, going back to the classroom, because cheating actually connects to what some of the kids have, have gone through as they've gone up through the ranks and in, in their years in school. You have two young boys who you really portray, and you get to know them very well, and you feel connected to them. One does better than the other. Do, do you think the one who didn't fare as well, uh, that, it, that the experiment almost works against him? I don't think, I think in the case of, of one of the kids in our movie, he was pretty far along. He was, it was maybe, I don't want to say too far gone, but his habits were so ingrained that I don't think that anything really, really could have changed his trajectory. I think that's one of the things the economists learned. If they're going to try incentives in schools, they should try it much, much earlier. You know, if five, six, seven-year-olds respond so far, much stronger to incentives. The kid who does better in our film, I think the big difference was his mother's involvement. There was a, you know, a, slight, a slight fear of his mom and his mother was riding him all the time. And I think that that made the biggest difference more than, than, than the dollars and cents involved. Okay, so take that then to the workplace though. Then is it that you need a boss riding your back and that's how you, you get more productive and you get more people to, to be more dedicated to their work? I think that's an experiment for another day. But. <laughs> okay, all right. You know, I, I also want to talk about the fact that you've turned a best-selling book as we just started the conversation into a film, but it was translated into some 35 languages. So does this transcend, does this connect with people outside the United States, or is this just a film for U.S. viewers? Oh, absolutely not. In fact, per capita, the book sold at a, at a greater clip in the U.K. than it did here in the United States. And as a search term, Freakonomics is a top 10 search term among Korean social networking sites. So it's a way that some young Korean men like to position themselves in the dating scene in Korea. So it's something that truly was a global phenomenon in, in literary circles, and, and we hope the same for our film. We've got to wrap up the conversation. I just want to ask you, what is it that you want people to take away from this film, especially those that have already read the book? Yeah, we have new material. Everything that Heidi and Rachel did is fresh. It wasn't part of the book. We, we also we went as hard for entertainment as we could. This is an incredibly engaging film without dumbing down any of the material. So it'll, it will both uh, inspire intellectually as well as appeal uh, in, in terms of entertainment. Okay, so Freakonomics based on the 2005 bestseller on the big screen on Friday. October All right. 1st. All right, thanks for popping by. I know you're obviously busy traveling around trying to promote the film. Heidi and Chad, appreciate it. Nice meeting you. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks, thanks so much. So much.